Hi, welcome to this lesson here on YouTube. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. Today's date is September 10th, 2016. Uh, we're going to discuss the, in this lesson, uh, in our mission of preparedness ministries, those um, um, areas of the Bible and here on earth are geographical locations uh, around rivers and lakes and uh, what the Bible has to say about the scripture of rivers and um, how they are a source and how we can feed off of them both scripturally and literally. Uh, here at our preparedness ministries uh, we are here to help you prepare for end times mentally, physically, emotionally and uh, we'd like to start off um, if you would join us with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father uh, thank you for this lesson we're about to embark upon. We ask that your Holy Spirit be with us in discussing these matters of the sources uh, that God provides in His river for us and for the sources that we have here on earth as well and that we could uh, feed off of uh, for ourselves and our family and our community and our churches uh, until the second coming of your Son, Jesus. Please help us to discern, dear Lord, these sources and to feed off of them uh, while glorifying you, Lord. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so let's start off with a scripture reading um, from Psalms 65.9 um, and regarding the rivers here of flowing. Uh, that's Psalms 65.9. It's just one small passage here. Um, so this is the praise to God for salvation and providence. So in Psalms 65, 9, You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain. For so you have prepared it. Um, so in God's preparing uh, the earth for us during, during creation, um, it says it, here that uh, you know, the river of God uh, is full of water. Um, but in the scriptures here, that river is not a little river. It's, it's a river of, of what he offers us of, of faith and direction and guidance and, um, and preparedness for his second coming. Um, this, this river now is our Holy Spirit. So this is what uh, Jesus left us when he died on the cross, the comforter of the Holy Spirit to, to help to guide us, to be our intercessory in our prayers to God. Um, so it is a source that which um, is described as water, uh, which we can relate to, which we need to daily feed from and to allow us to nourish. Uh, water here on earth nourishes also uh, literally our plants, our bodies, our planet is made up of 70% water. So are our bodies. Um, but our spiritual life is 100% uh, of the river of God, uh, which we need to stay connected to in order to win souls to heaven and to disciple to others and to strengthen our community through this river, through this body flowing of water. Um, and it is a flowing river. It doesn't stay still. It's not stagnant. Um, uh, but we do also like to refer to... Um, well, maybe it's not, I shouldn't say I or we. I, personally, I like to refer to uh, lakes as well, too, because they're a body of water. But that's in the sense of storing up and, to, um, and to, to gather that source thereof. Um, it doesn't flow, it stays there, but it is still a source. So I think lakes can be referred to as a reference to personal, individual people, uh, as it is the water. Uh, as in a river for people to uh, use as maybe redundancy or um, a storage, uh, but a storage in the sense of storage of in your heart, in your mind, and a storage of, of uh, that which you can uh, extract from as well when, when, when you need it in times of, uh, of, of despair. Um, so these are, these are God's words. Uh, and. It make it like a, uh, think of the lake as a, um, as nowadays you have the computers as like a database of storage, you know, a plethora of knowledge and wisdom. 
um, that you can uh, continually to uh, use as a resource. Um, so let's take another look at another passage here uh, from Luke. Um, actually, let's go to another another uh, river river source here in Psalms. Psalms 119, verse 136. That's Psalms 119, verse 136. of our sins. He writes them uh, continuously in our hearts and he's always drawing us towards him. You know, there's that constant continuous drawing of him. Huh? Audio went out. What? Audio went out. Audio went out. It's back on now. Okay, where, where did it go out? <laughs> it went out when you were reading the verse. Which verse? This new one? Yeah, this new one. Okay. All right, so a little technical difficulties here. The audio will cut out. So let's start off with the verse again. Our technician said that the audio went out from uh, Psalms 119, verse 136. about uh, when people don't keep God's laws um, and um, so he describes his, his um, tears as, as flowing rivers um, so again that that source of God uh, that people are disconnected from it could also be then a, a, um, an understanding when people don't follow those laws uh, how, it, how it pained it pained Jesus and it and it, uh, it burdens even God, uh, and it makes them sad that when people don't follow this, um, you know, we're born we're born into this wretched world. It's a blessed, beautiful creation, but it's wretched because because of the sin of that how we are wicked in our hearts and evil in our minds um, because of the fall um, from from Adam and Eve, and we're in this great controversy where those that uh, accept the truth and the gospel of the everlasting gospel. Um, and uh, are ready to receive those three angel messages. It burdens our hearts when people are led astray from that, or lead other people astray from that. So you know there are tears, um, uh, literally and metaphorically speaking, uh, that flow like rivers um, because people use God's source of river of spirituality that they uh, are plugged into. Um, and I guess that unplugging really, really adds such, such heartful um, uh, content in their hearts that when they, when people disassociate themselves with with God's words and His ways. Um, so I can understand that that spiritual point of view um, that really burdens people about about that uh, disconnection. Um, let's check into another faith, another um, uh, passage here of Luke 21, verse 25. Um, in regards to our, our end times here, um, and what it, what it has to say here about the, uh, the, the signs of the end of times here, Luke 21, verse 25, um, and it's titled, The Coming of the Son of Man. And, um, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexities, the seas and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them, from fear and expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up, lift your head up, because your redemption draws near. So, within these end time signs, th these are literal end time signs because these are uh, these are prophecies um, that there will be these these great signs, um, and um, there is some discernment uh, of understanding that some of these signs have happened um, uh, with the sun, the star, and the moons. 
um, that ended um, sometime uh, before 1844 when, when Ellen White had founded uh, the Adventist uh, Church. Um, um, so, but we still have to uh, know that um, the fear and the expectation of those things that which are coming on earth. Um, so it does it does seem to have a, a timeline here of uh, past and and uh, present uh, future understanding. So we need to expect uh, some uncertain times here of those things which are coming. It says straight here, coming on the earth, uh, for the powers of heavens will be shaken, um, and that's right before the second coming of man. Um, but I always find it interesting that and people also often misunderstand that when Jesus comes with these with the angels to place judgment on us he's not coming onto the earth these signs are be on the earth his feet will not touch the ground he will be in the clouds which we will ascend to to meet him after the dead are risen um, so when people uh, in these last end times try to fool those even elect that Jesus is here he's in the desert it says in the Bible, do not go. Uh, lo oh, look, he's over there. Um, do not believe, because he will not be on earth. He will be in the, in the clouds, so, which we are going to raise up to. Um, so, uh, as far as our scriptures go, with, with uh, relating to our rivers here, and I even, even have some notes here that say about the lakes too as well. Um, but let, let's relate that more to current current times here in 2016 uh, where we're going um, there are many sources of information um, that people get that they feed into their minds so like the rivers that God offers the flow of his wisdom and knowledge um, there are those other uh, physical sources and rivers and flows here that people feed upon uh, uh, of media and of uh, associations uh, places of geography where people are living, uh, neighbors, even family as well too, that we as Christians need to discern between uh, what is true and what is false um, and not fall into the traps uh, that Satan lays out. Uh, make no mistake, Satan's a predator. He's here to uh, hunt you down and to trap you uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, um, and we need to see these traps beforehand. Uh, we need to see what's coming and have a have a direct line into sight through uh, God's will. I mean, I pray every morning to, to do God's will, to be His will, to walk, talk, and act His will. Uh, Lord, make me willing to do Your will. But that will uh, is attached to our earthly five senses that we have here. You know, sight, sound, smell, hear, touch. Um, so what are you hearing uh, from other people's mouths? What are you what are you seeing on on TV or on YouTube? What are you seeing and hearing and um, you know so much other taste? You know you know I don't know if you can taste it or uh, or, or I guess touch as well too. Uh, there are sinful ways of, of, of using your body to uh, to touch uh, in, in a, inappropriately in relationships or um, you know without, without marriage. That's a whole other video, um, but we want to focus here on, on our, our preparedness for survival uh, in these rivers uh, that God offers us. So make sure you discern in those rivers um, in your physical environment as well. Um, let's see, and that, that includes uh, within the church as well too. Um, if you're not a ch church member, if you don't belong to a church, um, Many Christians uh, have fellowships and um, discuss these matters amongst themselves too. We still need to have our guard up and to make sure it's biblically uh, principled in scriptures, uh, those discussions that we have with each other, and to make reference to those exact scriptures and to prove that to one another as well. Um, and that goes for self-evaluation as well too. Even in the wilderness, you need to continuously observe your surroundings, observe yourself. You know, what is the condition of yourself? Self-examine yourself uh, physically, emotionally, spiritually, literally. Uh, are you in line with, with God's scriptures? Is your body in line with the condition in which it could be at its best? Are you healthy? 
You know, are you seeing clearly? Are you seeing with spiritual eyes? Or are you seeing with earthly eyes? Um, uh, so let's dig a little bit deeper now into our, our earthly realm here for uh, surviving uh, around rivers as well. Um, so in these end times, you know, we discussed in previous lesson videos about water and sources of water. Um, but one of the greatest sources of water is, is a river, a flowing river with fish. Um, you know, if you're lucky enough to be in, a, um, in the upper half of the United States, uh, mostly out west too, you get salmon. Uh, Alaskan wild salmon is the best salmon on the earth. Does it have skin and fails? Uh, it'll biblically clean food, so it have skin, uh, scales, and fins. <laughs> Skins. So we want to be able to uh, discern our, our food sources as well, from clean to unclean uh, food as well, too. So rivers are a great source, uh, which many uh, early tribal, if you go back all the way to the Nile River of Egypt as well, too, you know, societies and civilizations based around rivers. Um, but know also um, the, the source of that river as well. Is it coming from a mountain uh, that's close by where you know it, the contaminants are, are, are pure, that there's no contaminants, there's not contaminants along the way? Because just because you have a source, unlike God's sources of rivers, is pure, uh, here on earth our river sources may be contaminated upstream. Um, it could be something as simple as an animal that died as well. Um, and it's contaminating the water that's coming to you. So even though it's a fresh source of water, unless you can trust that source, just like you know humans, you trust the source. Uh, we boil. You gotta boil the water because um, if you have miles and miles of river and you're downstream, there's so many things here that could go wrong with that as well too. Even if something as simple as a disturbance in in the in the bedrock of a rock falling on top of another can release bacteria and mold and funguses, things that you don't want to really ingest without boiling first. Um, rivers also uh, have a flow uh, which can be used to conduct a energy source as well. So if you get a uh, source of an energy, I know there's certain um, treadmills that people exercise on. The generators in that um, can be uh, hooked up with a, uh, um, a fan belt and that could be connected to a bicycle rim with um, little extended uh, pieces that could flow into the river and it spins off the power of the source of that river as well too. Uh, which I guess you can relate biblically as well too. So as if, if we are energized and fed off that source we have an energy to feed off uh, uh, us spiritually uh, and now a source to feed us uh, with electricity to generate power from that as well too. Um, you know, they do that on a large scale in big rivers, um, like the Niagara River, there's big power sources, uh, just like windmills and solar power. Um, so our solar, uh, not our solar, our river, our river source is going to provide um, multiple, um, multiple venues of, uh, of, uh, of resources. Uh, you got food, you got water, um, and you also have animals as well too, because there'll be other animals that will uh, come to that river for a source of uh, a source of food, and uh, you'll be you'll be you'll be able to um, live off of those those clean animals as well those biblically clean animals uh, to uh, get get a source of nourishment for yourself as well too. So you want to be able to um, be, be, uh, get yeah, excuse the, the noise there in the background. You want to be able to get a source of uh, uh, your calorie count. Uh, uh, leveled out with your workload as well too. So if you live by a water, you're more than likely to, um, from this river, be able to build more, um, produce more as well too. Um, we, like a fire source, uh, I, I often relate the human body to like a fire source to be able to um, uh, create energy and to create this flame and this, uh, this temperature that we have inside of us. Um, with, a, with, a, with a limited shelf life, uh, just like, a, like if I was to strike a match right now, it would burn out. Um, but that, burn, that life source uh, burns out within us, it says in the Bible, you know, no more than 120 years. Uh, it would be nice if it was like the days of, uh, of uh, Moses and Noah, you know, we'd live to be you know, close to a thousand years. Um, 
But even then, you know, that wouldn't be enough. We always want more and more and more of um, the physical attachments of this world. So we need to uh, be able to detach from that and to continue our source uh, of rivers that we can uh, provide for us and sustain us as well, too. Um, so within this river, um, we could also have uh, as well, um, not only what's coming out of it, but um, what we could put into it as well too. If you want to communicate to others as well too, and you want to build a community of stronger ways to um, um, get a message across, you could literally send a message down the river as well too. If you know a community down there as well too, we look to start one. Um, but you know, add caution to that as well too, because that might invite unwanted, um, you know, attention to your location, your area, your sources as well. Um, so you really need to uh, think about and consider uh, during these end times that are coming up, what exactly um, you're going to uh, use uh, as far as uh, a location uh, that you might need to go to now. Some people are fortunate enough to live close to close enough to a river, river where they do not have to relocate. Uh, but if you do have to relocate, um, uh, the rivers are such a great source. Um, now some rivers will empty out into um, the mouth of the river into a great body of water. Uh, it might be a, an ocean, it might be a great lake. Uh, there's five great lakes here up in Canada um, on the borderline of the United States excuse me, where um, um, you could also uh, make camp or to bug out to into as well. Uh, lakes have pretty much almost the same uh, the same resources, fish, water itself, um, but more stagnant. You definitely want to boil all that water as well too, uh, unless it's a continuous flowing of in and out as well too, uh, keeping the levels. Um, and that's another thing to be, uh, to be aware of as well is the levels of the river. Um, some rivers run completely dry in seasons. Um, some have the source of the river is the, you know, the snow melting from the mountains, um, which is really probably one of the greatest, freshest uh, waters out there. Um, um, maybe a hundred years ago. <laughs> I take that back because uh, there's so much pollution uh, and the, and the uh, the the ecology the, the system of water flow you know that gets dissipated up and then turns into uh, moisture or snow or rain that goes onto those mountains really comes from the ground but what's going into the ground you know a lot of our waste a lot of our medicals um, so you got to think about all these pharmaceutical companies that are giving out so much pharmaceutical stuff that is that is man-made it gets discreted, it, get, it gets excreted through our bodies. And where does, that, where does that waste go? Into the ground, filtered back. So most water, if, if I tell people to drink distilled water because you just don't know what's in there. Uh, if, you, if you could take tap water and really dissect it, I'm sure it's got Prozac in it, I'm sure it's got um, Valium in it, I'm sure it's got a painkiller, whatever all those medications are in that water, in small amounts, but it is increasing over time. So distilling that water will, will take it away. Um, and you could even do your own distilling uh, from rivers and lakes as well too. Um, you know, when you people boil water, there's a cover on it, you pick that cover up, that's distilled water. Um, but if you have that cover um, elevated and it can just drip off from that boil and you catch that, that's your distilled water as well. That's a more purified form that your body could use without taking up so much energy to convert that to what I like to call uh, pharmaceutical grade uh, water which is your cells in your body that it uses for energy. Um, so around these rivers, uh, like I said in Egypt, uh, a lot of communities have developed so you have a stronger chance of um, developing a community in an off-grid situation uh, or being part of a community. It could be right across the river as well too. It might be a massive river that you cannot cross. Um, but you know, uh, you would want to learn some uh, other skills as well too. Have fishing gear. Um, if you can discern what type of fish are in there and how to fish for them. Some slow rivers uh, that move slowly, you do fly fishing uh, because those fish usually eat the flies that land on there and they catch them so that type of fishing is a different type of uh, technique to get your source of uh, nourishment um, faster river moving, larger moving rivers um, um, 
you might want to consider even even trapping as well too. Um, learn, learn, uh, watch videos on YouTube on how to weave a basket from vines uh, into a cone, uh, a cone shape, and then put a reverse cone shape in there. Fishes aren't aren't intelligent enough to once they go in that cone shape, and they're in this basket, they're not intelligent enough to you know go back out. I guess because you're supposed to put little spikes on there too, and that scares them, and so they won't. They can fit through there, but they won't. Uh, so that's another way to um, trap fish uh, in that area. Um, all right, so you got the fish itself, you got the animals that come there, you got the water itself too. Um, what else could rivers be used for? I guess a, a sense of uh, seasons as well too. Um, uh, like I said, with the, with the tides of the river, where they are on the river banks. Um, also, the river banks too as well. When their tide is low, a lot of places you find clay. So when the river banks is lower, you can get uh, into the um, sides of that where the river was at high tides, uh, tides but high, I guess elevations, uh, and build um, materials for a hut, uh, materials for uh, a kiln to, to cook at high. Uh, if you want to melt uh, melt metals, um, uh, shingles, roof shingles you could build out of clay. There's so many things you could make out of clay, vases to hold water. Um, that you can get from the side of the banks of those rivers as well too. Um, <clears throat> uh, prospecting um, in trade and barter. Uh, there are rivers around, mostly out west in the United States, a lot in Australia, I know that, uh, that have gold in them. So if you want to do gold panning, you have a pan, you know how to get the gold out and, that, and use that to barter or trade with. Uh, if someone has a good harvest uh, one year and then a bad harvest the next year, but they got a couple ounces of gold and the guy down the river has a huge harvest of extra corn and wheat and grains and wants to barter for some gold um, that could be another resource as well too um, but that as well too actually come to think of it uh, the river itself the water itself could be a barter as well so if you're traveling out away from the stream river some people might want to have that water stream um, that fresh water as a bar bargaining tool as well too so if you could Maybe get some 55-gallon drums if you're fortunate enough to have a horse and a, and a you know, cart to lug that much weight because water is extremely heavy. Um, now you could also um, dig a channel as well too uh, to bring water to you as well too because living close to a river, if you want to build your house close to a river um, and you're not familiar with the seasons, you could end up in a flood zone as well too. So. Um, consider a small channel to channel the water to you as well too. Um, and uh, as far as waste goes, uh, I, I don't believe in, in putting your, your body's waste, in a, your, your urine and fecal matter back into the river. Again, you don't want to contaminate people downstream. Um, that, that could be buried um, in, in your own outhouse that you would make as well too and just keep it away from the river as well too and say as a rule of thumb. You know, at least at least a hundred feet, uh, because it is going to seep into the ground over time as well. Um, and um, hopefully, your lake is um, uh, your your river is flowing enough where it doesn't freeze up in the winter times. Um, but it gets cold enough and low enough in the winter times. You really want to consider your locations of lakes around you as well too. Um, have tools or learn how to um, uh, ice fish uh, without falling in. Uh, there are drills that you can just get around you if the ice is, I think, at least uh, 12 inches thick. You could stand on it and drill without it cracking underneath you with a hut and learn to get fish that way of sources as well. Um, so we're going to show you some of these examples. Um, we we uh, like to remind you to be prayerful at all situations, uh, especially in these end times, um, and be mindful as well of those around you. Um, and you have to continually evaluate them in their state of mind, what they need, what resources you have. You want to keep Bibles, a couple extra Bibles around if you can as well too, and so you can uh, send people on their way. And uh, we, want, we want you to, uh, to share this video, to like, to comment. Um, feel free to uh, contact us with the information below in the, uh, in the description uh, through email or phone and to um, and to lead this, use this video to lead to come to others to understand their um, our 
tech. Bring that closer to me. I just can't read. He's trying to tell me something. Uh, 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 okay, yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Um, so we want to be able to have people uh, to use these videos as a um, as a connection to Christ and to come to know uh, that they are sinners and that they need Jesus Christ in their life uh, to be able to discern right from wrong, uh, uh, truth and prophets from false prophets. Um, so if you haven't yet already uh, accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, please do so. Please do so now. Accept Him as your as Savior and to repent of your sins and call upon the name of the Lord uh, to have mercy on you and to welcome you into His kingdom and to lead a life um, that is without sin um, and to help to do the same for others. Help to build uh, your church in your community now and to know how to build it in the aftermath and to be able to have home churches and how to do church planting in where a rural area where there are no churches for sometimes hundreds of miles. Uh, so you want to be able to um, be able to do this and grow this as well. Um, do research on everything I said. Expand upon it. Please share this video and like it. And we'll see you again soon uh, for our next lesson. Um, and we look forward to that. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this lesson that we're able to give to you, um, to, to your people, and to allow them to um, hear your words. Help us, dear Lord, to continue to give these lessons and to help people to understand about your, your river that doesn't dry up, that flows continuously, and that people can feed upon, dear Lord, for their growth in, in spirituality and guidance. Uh, and wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your of your river, Lord. And thank you, dear Lord, for, for uh, everything that you keep and sustain from your creation that you've built. And help us, dear Lord, to be guided by you in our own rivers here on earth, dear Lord, for, for sustenance and um, for navigation and for, and for um, your second coming of your Son, Jesus, during times that are going to be... Um, persecuted upon us, especially our Christian brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you and God bless you.